Okay, so I've told you how to multiply and how to add matrices. I've told you what the properties of matrix multiplication and addition are. And now I want to talk about why do we have matrix multiplication? Why is it useful to have this notion of multiplication? So let's start with a toy example. So we have a factory. It makes two types of toys, scooters and jumping jacks. Each scooter is made up out of five planks of wood, one cup of paint, and 20 screws. Each jumping jack is made of just two planks of wood, half a cup of paint, and 30 screws. Please write down the matrix X, which takes as input the vector of scooters and jumping jacks and produces as output how many the raw ingredients we need. So X is the matrix, which looks at, oh, we want to build this stuff. What supplies are we going to need to build it? Um, so in my class, I would stop now and tell everyone, please take out a piece of paper and write down your answer. And I'm going to do that now. Please pause your video, write down your answer. Okay, let's see if we have the same answer. Um, as a note, I'm going to be asking a bunch of questions throughout this talk, and I'm not always going to give you the answers. If there's a question where they're all meant to be things you can work through for yourself, but if you can't, that would be a great thing to discuss in office hours. Okay, so here's the answer. It's this three by two matrix. Notice that there are three outputs because we want the output to be this vector with three elements. And there are two inputs because we want the input to our process to be these, this vector of two things. And so notice that if, for example, if we want to find out how much wood we need, well, for each scooter we make, we need five planks of wood. So five times the number of scooters. And for each jumping jack, we need two planks of wood. So the total amount of wood we need is five scooters and two jacks. And that's exactly what we get if we multiply matrices in the way we multiply matrices, going across this row and down this column. And the same thing happens in the other rows and the other columns. Okay, so matrix multiplication, the way we multiply a matrix by a vector, we multiply a matrix by a vector in exactly the way that accounts for this sort of process, where we have one contribution from the scooters and another contribution for the jumping jacks, and we just add them up. Okay, so that's why we multiply a matrix by a vector the way we do. In order to talk about multiplying two matrices, I'm gonna keep going with this silly example. So let's say a plank of wood weighs 200 grams and costs 30 cents. And I've given you weights and costs for the other items. So if we know how much wood, how much paint, and how many screws we want, what is the matrix that's gonna tell us how much these things weigh and how much these things cost? Take a moment, write down your answer, you can pause. And this time I'm not going to tell you the answer, but if you are unsure of your answer, that'd be a great thing to bring up in office hours. Okay, so we've got two matrices. The matrix X converts toys into raw materials, and matrix Y converts raw materials into weight and cost. If we wanna take our toys and convert them directly into weight and cost, I claim we should multiply the matrices. And I'm gonna ask you, which way should we do it? Should we multiply X times Y or Y times X? Pause the video, write down what you think, go on. Okay, so the reason that we have matrix multiplication is because, and again, I'm not telling you the answer because I think you should talk to the people in section if you want to. But matrix multiplication is built the way it is because it's exactly the process which allows you to first do one thing to a vector and then do another thing to a vector. 
let me say it a little more abstractly, and then I'll say it even more abstractly on the next slide. So here I've got matrix A. A has P columns. That means it has P inputs. And matrix A has Q rows, which means it has Q outputs. Um, let's clean that up a little bit. So A has P inputs and Q outputs. B has Q inputs. And R outputs. And the matrix product B times A, B times A is going to take my P inputs do first A to them, then B to them, and give me my R outputs. It's a little confusing if the product is written this way. B times A means A first, then B. That's because we like to work with column vectors, and we like to write our product as first B, then A, then our vector, say V, of inputs. So if you liked row vectors, or you like to write your product in the other order, you could do that, but it's not the usual thing that we do in this course. Okay, so matrix multiplication is first do A, then do B. What kind of thing can we do? We can do linear things. And what do I mean by that? So the definition is a function which takes P inputs and gives Q outputs is called a linear function if whenever you add together the inputs, you wind up adding together the outputs. So f of x plus y is f of x plus f of y. And whenever you rescale the input by some scalar, you rescale the output by the same scalar. So the function that we just talked about, the function, both functions that we just talked about, the function that takes as input the number of toys of each type and gives as output the amount of wood, paint, and screws, that's a linear function. If we have twice as many scooters to make, we will need twice as much wood. And if we have so many scooters and so many jumping jacks to make, the output will be the sum of the outputs, that the required materials will be the sum of the required materials for the scooters and the required materials for the jumping jacks. So that's what we mean by linear. And then the theorem is that linear, oh, sorry. I'll do this in the other order. The theorem is that linear functions are exactly the functions that can be described by matrices. So they are exactly the functions where you take your input vector x and you multiply it by some matrix. Um, warning. The function f of x is 2x plus 5 is not linear in this sense because two x plus y plus five does not equal two x plus five plus two y plus five. So in a high school algebra class, you would call 2x plus 5 a linear function, but now we don't. You should just learn to live with that. I'll say a little more about that at the end of this lecture. Okay, and here's one more thing that you might enjoy trying. So here is some linear function. If my input is 1, 0, my output will be 1, 2. If my input is 1, 1, my output will be 4, 7. You could check that this function looks like it is linear because f of 1, 1 
does indeed equal f of one zero plus f of zero one. So looks like it's linear. And one more challenge for you to think about you know, is what is the matrix of this function? Again, I'm gonna pause, give you a chance to think. Okay. And just to repeat more abstractly what I said concretely before, multiplying matrices is exactly composing functions. If the function F is multiplication by the matrix A and the function G is multiplication by the matrix B, then doing F and then G composing the functions is the same as multiplying by BA. Um, a few, those are the main things I have to say, but here are some small notes. Remember before we had the identity matrix. The identity matrix is the function which just gives you back your input again. It takes the input, does nothing to it, it spits it out exactly unchanged. Um, if you've been reading a textbook as you're supposed to, you'll have learned about the inverse matrix. The inverse matrix A undoes what the matrix A does. So if you do A and then do A inverse or the reverse, A inverse and then A, you exactly get your input back again. And as I right here, that means that equations A, A inverse or A inverse A must be the identity, must be the thing it gives you back exactly what you started with. Um, you might think maybe A, B inverse is going to be A inverse B inverse, but actually no, A, B inverse is B inverse A inverse. So let's see why that works. If you multiply B inverse A inverse, times AB, well, I told you in the little short lecture that it doesn't matter how I parenthesize a product. I can remove all those parentheses. It's the same thing as, come on. It's the same thing as B inverse A inverse AB, which is the same thing as B inverse identity B, which is the same thing as B inverse B, which is the same thing as the identity. So multiplying B inverse A inverse by AB gives me back the identity. Whereas A inverse B inverse times AB is usually not the identity. And if you want a conceptual way of thinking about this, if B means put on your socks and A means put on your shoes, then the reverse operation, the one that undoes that is going to be take off your shoes, then take off your socks. Okay. Uh, one final note at the end. So we have, so mathematicians are not always completely consistent in notation. For this course and for most courses you'll take from now on, the function f of x equals 2x plus 5 is not called linear. That doesn't mean we don't care about it or it's not a useful function, it is just not a linear function. Um, here's an analogy. Um, from a naive perspective, 2x plus 5, its graph is a line. You might think, well, that seems pretty linear. But from a sophisticated perspective, functions of the form f of x equals mx, where I just multiply by a matrix, form a more natural class than functions of the form g of x is mx plus b. Just like to a biologist who understands ocean life, right, fish form a more natural class than fish and whales. Uh, if you'd like a piece of vocabulary, one that we're not gonna use much, Functions where you multiply by a matrix and add on a vector afterwards are called affine linear functions. Now, affine linear functions do come up all the time in the world, and there's a little cute trick you can use to embed them inside matrix multiplication, which is this one. If you really care about 
computing mx plus b, put an extra one on the bottom of your matrix, and then in mx, and then if you multiply this matrix product on the right, m, b, whole bunch of zeros, one, by the vector with x up here and a one on the bottom, what you'll get will be mx plus b with a one on the bottom. So it'll come up a lot in applications that it will be convenient to just tag an extra one on the bottom of all our vectors. For example, people who are doing the project on camera matrices, we'll see that all of our vectors have an extra one on the bottom. And this is why. It's because it allows us to bring the formalism of matrices to bear on the practical situation of affine linear maps. Okay, and that is where I will stop for today.